You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and we are coming to you from McMaster University. Where we're sitting down with our good friend, Dr. Julia Daniel, who's a professor in the Department of Biology and Associate Dean of Research and External Relations. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you very much. It's great to be with you because you are making KISO cool in science. So for our viewers who don't know, tell us about your discovery and the KISO gene. Okay, so I, when I was conducting postdoctoral studies at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, I was trying to understand what made cells break off of the tumor and spread to other organs like the brain, the lungs and the liver, because that's what typically kills patients. And in this process of trying to understand why cells become motile and move, I cloned a new gene. It was new because no one had published it before. The sequence didn't have a name. And when you find a sequence in the genome that hasn't been named or characterized, you get to name it. And my supervisor said I could name it anything I wanted. At the time, I had seen very few black people at cancer conferences in the US or Canada. And so I wanted to name it something as an ode to my Caribbean heritage. And that's why I named it Kai So after my favorite Calypso music. You're a professor in the Department of Biology, and you guys are doing so many different things. So can you tell us what your research team is working on right now? So right now, we have three projects going in the lab. There's one relatively new project that we're really excited about that's not published. We haven't told many people about it. There's evidence that um, a deletion or mutation in Kaizo is contributing to human developmental disorders. So that's our newest project. And then there's the second project is a project looking at the role of Kaizo in colon cancer, as well as the disparities in colon cancer between black and white populations. And the third project, which is what most people know about my lab and my or research, is looking at triple negative breast cancer, or TMBC, and the disparities in triple negative breast cancer outcomes in black women compared to other women. We're trying to figure out why it is that women of African ancestry have more prevalent uh, occurrence of this aggressive breast cancer subtype. And we're also trying to figure out uh, how we can get better targeted treatments for these women. And I think that more women should get involved in STEM because we need the diversity. Even though science is kind of branded as being very objective, the people doing the science are not. Right? They come with their own implicit biases. And if you don't have like a diverse body in the sciences, those sorts of things will continue to perpetuate. Society and the government has to step in with some regulation to protect people. Some of my work has shown that black people, for instance, have higher levels of some chemicals that you'd find in personal care products than white people. So that it's quite empowering because having that knowledge, we can decide to say, I can't use this product, or I can advocate for regulations. Small modular nuclear reactors are nuclear reactors that are a much scaled down version of their very grandiose, gigantic uh, counterpart. Depending on what you need in terms of power output and where you need it, you can assemble these small modular reactors in any way you want. Particularly in Canada, one of those places is for Indigenous communities. And so Indigenous communities need power, but sometimes um, it's hard to get. And so a lot of Indigenous communities right now are actually running off diesel fuel. And the transportation of that diesel fuel is becoming increasingly expensive to get. And so once small modular reactors are online, one of the first places I hope that they get deployed, but also where the politics and the research is going as they go there first. Black students should pursue STEM, one, if they're interested in it, but also so that we can start to dismantle some of the white supremacist ideals um, that are rooted in STEM as well. So if any young girl is watching and wants to go into the field of STEM, I would say go for it. We can do anything that anybody else can do. Just by enrolling into those fields, you can create that uh, diversity, and representation for us. Anyone can do this. Many women in STEM professions went through significant challenges and barriers, but we did it because we had that deep-rooted passion and mindset to succeed, because we were driven to make a change in society or to solve a deeper problem. Yep. That's amazing. And I really want to thank you for your time and showing us around the campus. I was so impressed by all the different work you're doing, the professors we met, the students we met. It's been a great pleasure. 
Thank you for having us and thank you for showcasing McMaster and all of the Afro-black, as you call them, um, scientists at McMaster. Our pleasure. And you're watching Caribbean Vibrations. Caribbean Vibrations.